used to do I don't do no more The things I used to do I don't do no more The more things I used to do I don't do no more For the Lord's made a change in me This is Melissa and today is the 28th of March, 2024. And this is the second half of the conversation that I had with Elmer in Thailand. And it's quite interesting to see, to live in Thailand, because in Thailand, nobody cares about moon landings or space program. Or, <laughs> you know, it's like it's so, and, and when I, you know, turn on the internet, my computer, and I listen to these truth channels, and they're like, you know, I've been living here now for eight years almost, me and my wife, so it's been a while, and it's, you know, the thing that scares me most is the the, the the di- digital money they are trying to push down our throats. Yes. Uh, yeah. The CBDCs or what they call it. Yeah. Uh, but 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 it's gonna take a hell of a long time here down in Thailand to get seventy million that are not credit worthy. Mm-hmm. Well, it's gonna take a longer time in the east and I'm eastern part of the world and and I also remember Alan saying that in some broadcast that if you can live in a third world country go there because that's where the new world order will have the it will take longer time for that to yes, have a strong role absolutely. there in, in certain regions yeah so so that was part of the decision why we moved actually we couldn't stand living in norway because you know it was like it was suffocating uh, you know alan has another long time listener on the same island where you are i should um if you're interested. Yeah, I, 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 I briefly met him, actually. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. and he's a friend of the musician again. Oh. The, yeah. This is the, the but, same guy. He's he's from the States, a contractor, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but and it's very interesting also that many of the expats down here are more awake than people in general percentage-wise than people are at home. So, yeah. So how did you, I mean, in part it was because Alan said the third world places would be the last hit or, you know, wouldn't wouldn't get it yeah. quite so bad. Was it part of your travels and your career that led you to that particular island in Thailand or what? Well, the, the, the main reason was that uh, in 2000, let's say, could that be 2012, Actually, my wife, I've known her for 25 years, but that's just through TV, you know, connections and stuff like that. But we married nine years ago in Norway, and she had bought a house down here in 2007 Ah. on the island. So that's the reason. And then she got, she has this problem. She has post-traumatic stress disorder from certain things, and she has hypermobile joints. Uh, that's a disease you're born. What, uh, you you just cut out there for a minute. What, know, what can, is that? You know, well, it's just a long story. But anyway, okay. she got disabil- disability payment, you know, early, like when she was 51 or something like that. So that's our income, you know. Ah. Oh. So we get that from Norway. So, but, but and the house was already cashed out, you know, 2007. So we only have electricity, the internet, and food. Uh, and we have three dogs, so they need food, but <laughs> they get the best food. <laughs> they yeah. get better food than people get. <laughs> so we spoil them to death. Uh, but but uh, but we had that, you know, set up. And we just said, and I was living in a artist uh, collective. I had like 400 square meters of, you know, gallery, and I'm doing my photo art. And I said, like, just. Now you you got your payment, disability payment. You can take it to Thailand, and you have we have a house. Let's move, and we just moved. Just like in three four months, we just decided to move, and we gave away most of my old furniture to some church aid, and yeah, just left. Took some books, took some computers, you know, essentials, and yeah. So that's that was, quite. That's uh, an adventure. That's an adventure. Do you both still have yeah, family yeah. in Norway? Well, uh, she has a mother and a very sick father. 
that's had cancer in the nose and had seven strokes. He used to be a commercial advertisement, you know, drawer, very talented. But he's like been in a wheelchair for 10 years now. And But my mother and father is dead and I have only one aunt, aunt left. X is a freelance journalist. Mm-hmm. She used to work in one of the bigger newspapers in uh, in Oslo, in Norway. And then she went freelance, you know, while we were still together. But and, and that was the weird thing, because she knew my father, and we watched documentaries about 9-11. She read some. We were all in agreement that, you know, things were what they was, you know. And when, when my father died, she just flipped, you know. That is she, interesting. She, yeah, and she like she was just going like 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 a jellyfish, just going back to its original size or or form, and just was mainstream and just like, but didn't we we agreed upon this, right? Yeah, you know, you, how can you not? And then you know we had some quarrels, and so I left when my baby was one and a half years old. We broke up, and I moved into my own apartment and so it was kind of sad but I felt betrayed in a way you know yeah uh, in a deep way yeah. yeah so so that was sad and you know but what can I do are you able to have much of a relationship with your daughter oh yeah well not much I can I call her you know a few times every month and we talk you know that's yeah. okay Mm-hmm. Um, but it's very platonic, you know, it's it, it's far away. And I tried to get her to come down here and visit me, but her mother is like, oh, Thailand is too dangerous. And no, no, and no, it's not dangerous. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but, but, you know, it's like, well, she's getting, now she's 16 almost. So maybe now she can decide that she wants to come down on her own. I hope. Uh, uh, and I don't have, we don't have, we, 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 we get along fine. We have m- enough money per month, but we don't have, you know, like, I can't just buy an airplane, airplane ticket to Norway and stay at the hotel for a month. I don't have that economy. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 you know, and Norway is like one of the most expensive places in the world, you know? So it's, it's horribly expensive. You wouldn't believe. I think in uh, one liter of uh, petrol now is three dollars fifty cents for one liter. Ooh. That's a third of a gallon. Wow, that is yeah. expensive. Yeah, that is. Uh, so and then you, the electric, you've... you know, the all the we have hydropower in Norway, and that's all been sold out to the Acer agreement with the uh, European nations. You know, uh-huh. with the EU, even though we are not a member. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's bad. So, so, so they have, then people are starving in Norway now. They're beginning to starve. I'm really? not kidding you. People are standing in food lines now in Norway. Yes. What kind of an excuse are they giving? Because I'm hearing different things about hunger and food production problems and supply chain. Everywhere you look, you get a different excuse. Yeah. For what's going no, I don't on. Know what the, yeah, I don't know what the excuse they give. I, I don't follow Norwegian mainstream media mm-hmm. or any media for that matter. But well, they well the Norwegians are a special kind of breed of people. Well, the modern Norwegians are. They are very conform. They're very suffering from the Stockholm syndrome. If you understand what I mean, mm-hmm. you know that. Mm-hmm. And it should be called the Norway syndrome or the Oslo syndrome <laughs> because it's actually worse in Norway than in Sweden. Uh. <laughs> but they are they are so uniform and they do whatever they are told. They are so they have been hammered in the head all their lives, and that all oh, you know we're all this collective group and blah 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 blah. Um, but I don't know what kind of, I think people are, they know what's wrong, 
because of this all these agreements with EU and the, you know selling the electricity cheaply to Germany, England, and UK and and so forth. But but they're just complaining, and then two weeks later they just accept it. They accept the the price hike or whatever it is. They just accept it, and then they complain about something else, and then nothing is done. But what can they do? You know, the whole yeah. system is taken over. Yeah. You know, it's a sad story. You know, and and I'm just waiting to. You know, I remember Alan talking about banning uh, fire, uh, firewood. Yes. You know, and that's coming. That's probably coming. And we, when that's coming to Norway, I wonder if some civil obedience will arise. I hope. <laughs> Because uh, that is insane. Because then people will just freeze to death yeah. in, the, in the winter. Yeah. yeah, and they've already been doing. You know, in England, I heard Alan talk about forty, fifty thousand dying each winter in the UK. Oh, Elderly that, people that, is, that don't. That's terrible. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I I don't know if it's that high, but. I, oh. I think the highest was close to 20,000 one year, but I think yeah, I mo yeah, yeah. most years they have thousands of people who freeze to death or have to make a mm -hmm. choice between eating and heating. And for yeah. some reason, I mean, I've looked, I've seen that there are similar stories that come out of Germany, for instance, um, other mm. parts of Europe, but this is, it's like a plague in England. Yeah. Of people who cannot yeah. afford to heat themselves. And they've tried yeah. what you're talking about, banning firewood. In Canada, there are places already, like I think in Montreal, where you can't have a wood burning stove unless it's been retrofitted in a way. You know, it's almost by the time yeah, they put these yeah. filters in, it's it's a non functioning unit. Same mm. thing in parts of the mm. western U.S., Oregon maybe, or Washington State, where yeah. in, in certain urban areas, wood-burning stoves aren't allowed. And in actually, a wood-burning stove is one of the cleanest things that you can have. Of course. I mean, yeah. it's... Yeah. But people and don't know, put, they're ignorant. And you can use you all the ash from the firewood and you can put that on your field when you're growing things because mm -hmm. it's full of minerals from the trees yeah. which the plants need that's what we did in the old days that's right yeah. or make soap out of it yeah yeah there's so many so many things you can do and it's like uh, I don't know and, and it's so sad to see that you know the what you know just from the 70s my, my grandfather he had these you know, we I grew up on a small island, and my my mother's father and um, and mother lived on an even smaller island, just south of our the main island, and we just took a small boat trip ten minutes over, and most of my childhood, you know, in the summers were spent there, and you know, my 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 uh, uh, the father of my mother, he was a teacher in literature and professor in literature. But he was like growing carrots, onions, potatoes, had his own compost, had a, you know, but didn't have animals, but, you know, and he was rowing in a rowboat to work every morning. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, you know, to the mainland. You know, that was true grit. He, had, he was like two meters, ten centimeters, very tall guy, strong, very stoic guy. Uh, but he, he's, you know... Even then, it was no. He made the, his own food. You know, we had. You know, we ate our own vegetables. You know, I can remember that. That was in the seventies. Now nobody does that anymore. Mm -hmm. Almost nobody. Yeah. So it's very sad to see that. You know, they go to the supermarket and buy all these things, and they that mostly it's imported from the Netherlands uh, or some other place, and or of course some fruits from Africa. And, and but they're you know. Norwegians have lost contact with nature, except for skiing. That's it, you know. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they really lost their way with nature, and 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 all this uh, for me, uh, going through this awakening process has connected me to nature like nothing else ever has in my life. Really? Because I see now the value of everything. Because I, uh, to steal something from another podcaster, 
There is no lie in nature. Uh huh. Nature doesn't lie. Never lies. Yeah. You know what I mean? In yes, a metaphorical I, sense, it never yes. lies. Yeah. So if if you put your hand in the fire, well, you're gonna burn yourself. <laughs> it happens, you know, and then and you can take just, you know, multiply that, you know, mm-hmm. and there's an apple. Yeah, I was um, having it back. You can go into the jungle and you can pick papayas or those for free. Nobody cares. It's the, of course it grows very freely. So, so, so that's a big advantage with the tropics. But you know, uh, but the other thing with the Thai people is like the heat. You know, you know, the heat makes people kind of and when things are easy. They come become a little bit lazy, you know what I mean. And we people that live used to live the old way up in north, we were always preserving for winter and uh-huh. you know chopping wood in the spring and drying the wood, getting ready for winter, having our earth cellars filled up with potatoes and carrots, you know. Always, you know, we we have another mindset altogether, you know. Here they're just like thinking two days ahead, you know. More like that, you know. To yes, simplify absolutely. It. That the uh, I, the kind of island mentality. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, there have been some sociologists and anthropologists who've done interesting work on mm-hmm. that. You know what what you call the the ways in which societies develop, and there is something about those cold countries that makes people yeah. more individualistic. Oh yes, yeah. oh yes. Yeah, we do come from people that have had to rely on, you know, thinking ahead, planning, mm-hmm. how am I going to heat myself? There's been some interesting work that has been done on where you've got uh, peoples mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. have learned to rely on themselves and they have mm-hmm. they tend to have small clan and small clan identity like a family an immediate family as opposed to mm-hmm. a more collective kind of culture mm-hmm. that you get often in a warmer climate yeah 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 and easy come easy go it's you know, i've seen the same thing in certain parts of africa to some extent in southern america but 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 uh, less there because but that, that's more because of political unrest and uh, I like you know even though like you know the men are tougher much tougher in Central America than they are in Asia I would say but Thailand you know after COVID it changed I guess like every country changed a lot you see when the income is taken away slowly by tourists not coming. Mm-hmm. You saw the desperation in the Thai people coming slowly. And then you saw the true self. You know, they, they kind of become, a, they, they look at expats as walking ATMs, you know, mm-hmm. you know, money banks. And when the income just kind of dries up, they can't, you know, it was like, it was a double whammy for them, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing uh, fall out from the vaccines and things like that, but and the lockdowns and everything. But you know, so many businesses just went belly up here, and it has not bounced back the way it was, and it probably never will. And that's not the plan either. So, and yeah. and I uh, two, well, I think one foreign minister and one other from the cabinet went to the World Economic Forum last meeting now from Thailand. Really? So that's not a good side. Yeah, that's true, too. That's not a good side. The foreign minister and another minister, I don't yeah. remember which department, but uh, so they're, they, they they're were recently at the World Economic Forum. Yeah, so, they're, they're uh, yeah. getting on board. Um, let, let me ask a question about other little things I've heard over the years. This is particularly about the average Thai man especially of the mm. the maybe the poorer class but perhaps all of them have a proclivity towards alcoholism is that just a gross exaggeration or is it is there any truth to that well uh, there's a lot of alcoholic uh, in this uh, region i would say but i don't have any statistics but yes there's a lot 
mm-hmm. and they have they but they have a but it's not like yeah i guess there's there's more than than for example norway or per capita or america i would say and but the other thing is they have a very big uh, meth amphetamine problem among the youth really that's sad to see to such, to such a degree that actually the government has tried to that they have legalized something that's called kratong now that's just leaves on a, on a on a tree that you can just make tea of and that takes away the uh, the craving for even heroin or alcohol or and they have legalized that and that's the first time since well they made it illegal over a hundred years ago and now they legalize it because they see that they have such problems with the youth how is that leaf spelled? Akratong. It's K-R-A-T-O-N-G G, I think some Kratong. Okay. Kratong, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So they legalize that in like kind of a band aid effort, you know, to see if they can, you know, turn it around a little bit. But so so I would say the methamphetamine use is very, very bad here in but you know, next door we have Myanmar, and that's where they make it. Okay. So, yeah. and I won't say much more, but nothing new under the sun. So I've been so much in Myanmar covering different things in the past, and I talk to, you know, guerrilla intelligence officers, and they have, you know, they heard radio communications about this and that smuggling and large. I mean, I mean conveyor belt things, you know. Oh. And, so, yeah, so that's a problem, and you know, and and Thailand wants to have like they have business. They buy oil and gas from Burma or Myanmar, and of course, there's the black market of, with the methamphetamines that they make inside the jungle there in Myanmar, and you know, so and China is up there in the north, and they have their deals, and so nobody wants to rock the boat too much, you know. So, so the last time I was in Myanmar, I had to be smuggled in, you know, I had to meet some guerrilla soldiers in way, way in beyond yonder and go for three hours march to get to the closest guerrilla bases because I didn't want any journalists in there. And that was like 15, 16 years ago, you know, already. Uh-huh. So, so, so they don't like any publicity around, you know, Myanmar and Thailand and business and, and, and they're fighting like never before in Myanmar. Nobody, no, nobody knows about it because nobody's covering it in the media. But, but the, the, it's it, the civil, that's the longest war, ongoing war in, uh, in the world. It's in its 75th year now, I think. Non-stop. Well, you know, I, so I, I, I'll always hear about some kind of unrest in Myanmar, but I have no idea, <laughs> like, what is at the root of it? It started in 46, 48, I think, after World War II, after Britain. Uh, well, Britain, well, the Japanese were inside Burma, and then the British uh, Gurkhas, together with the Karen, actually, uh, that's an ethnic group which I worked mostly with, uh, they fought out the British, uh, no, not the British, the Japanese, out of Burma, but mostly the Karenis lost, they'd lost thousands of soldiers, and the, then Britain just left, and then, you know, Aung San Suu Kyi's uh, father was a general, he was assassinated, and after that there was a military dictatorship that hasn't gone away. But, you know, even Aung San Suu Kyi, I have different opinions about her than I had 20 years ago. So, but that's for another day. But uh, they're, they're fighting like, but, but the good news in a way is that you could say that the guerrilla groups or the ethnic groups have uh, captured more and more of their country back or their regions back. So that's a good thing because they're fighting for their lives, you know, they're, they're getting exterminated. It's, it's a slow genocide in that country. It's been going on for a long time. But there's so many ethnic groups, but the majority, 65%, are Burmese, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so, and the Kareni, the Christian, they are Christian because of the British, you know? And then you have a Buddhist fraction of the Karen, and then you have the Shah and the Chi people, and you have mm-hmm. those... Uh, up north, 
the Ryonga. It's not the Ryonga people. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, so yeah. it's like so, but but it, they're coming in with attack helicopters, firing you know into villages and a lot of people displaced and yeah. I get emails every 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 week from a certain organization, so I'm up to date on where they're fighting and so so. But yeah, you know how it is. There's fighting everywhere, but you know it's mostly. Those Ukraine and it. Yeah, okay. I think you're just yeah. cut. Yeah, you just cut so, out there for a second. There is something nefarious with American intelligence operations, also with Burma. I don't know what's going on, but I can't prove anything. But I think they're connected in some way. Some way, and I've heard even when I work with Norwegian special forces that they have people inside the country. And what the hell are you doing in Burma? Uh huh. You know. So I don't know what their the plans for that region is, but uh actually I thought about going back and just doing a documentary, but then again nobody wanna watch anything. And you have to have, you know, you know, somebody to broadcast this and you should make it multilingual in different you know, so people can have subtitles and and I have no budget and so I don't know. I don't know, but I have very strong contacts. So I'm anytime welcome to come. I've been there so many times. So, so, but I don't know. I'm getting old, so I've done it enough. <laughs> oh, <I guess. laughs> you're 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 not. <laughs> no, but I've been. You know, it's been. I'm tired of. I've been shot at several times and arrested and. <laughs> Yeah. So it's not yeah. that. In other words, so, you might be so, getting too old for that. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm a little bit too old for that. Running in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. So, but it's uh, yeah, they have a strange business relationship, Thailand and uh, and Myanmar and Burma. So, so, but uh, but 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 then again, you know, they're very conform. And like I said, with Norway. Uh, I think it was Alan that actually brought up the Ingram study from the 60s mm -hmm. that showed that the Norwegians were the most confirmed people in the world. That was in the 1967 or something. And he went to France, Britain, Germany, Switzerland, all over the place. And he thought that the Norwegians were ex-Vikings and they would be anti-authoritarian, you know. Mm -hmm. And to the contrary, he was so, found out that the Norwegians were so conformed they were willing to lie just to go with the flock, you know, at a higher rate than any Frenchman would do or Italian would do, you know, you see what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and then there was yeah. another uh, EU, they, they, they made a survey of all the countries in Central Europe, including Norway, Sweden, Finland. That was in 2010, and they, Norway was the most naive people in the whole region, they found out when they were asked that did this uh, scientific study. So, so uh, yeah, they're very, whatever the TV says, they do, more or less, more or less, 92%, I would say. That's very sad. Yeah, it's sad. Uh, yeah, it is, it is. Well, when Alan was a young man, he spent a lot of time in Norway, and he loved the country, but, you know, things change. Yeah, yeah they do. I, it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. God damn, it's a, I miss the nature. It's so beautiful. It's one mm -hmm. of the wonders of the world if you go up north. It's so beautiful. It's, uh, it's breathtaking. Mm -hmm. But the people, uh, and you know, all the fisheries has been more or less taken, you know, it was like the whole north of Norway just 50 years ago, they were like alive cultures with small fisheries. They're all gone now. You know, it's it's big trawlers that are out at sea, big companies, mm -hmm. and this is just like ghost town at the ghost town if you mm -hmm. go further north, you know, up in Norway. And the same in, is in Sweden, too. Yeah. It's uh, half mm -hmm. of Sweden is unpopulated, you know, the northern parts. There's just like empty farms everywhere, you know. Oh. Very yeah, yeah, very sad. That's so sad. So, so. Yeah, it's like uh, all desolate, all abandoned. <laughs> it reminds me of something, somebody calling into 
Alan Watt once, and there was a caller many years ago, and said, "Ah, oh, we just went to Scotland. It's so nice, so <laughs> little people, and of course." And he said, "Yes, that's because you know most of the people have been exterminated." <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, <laughs> and they were like shocked, you know, they didn't know the story of Scotland, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, now but, it's, uh, it's, um, it's sad to but, see. But, yeah, but but one uh, very interesting thing, uh, you know, also with, uh, well, I'm very glad I discovered uh, Alan, Alan when I did, because it was like, it was painful at first, but, but you know, to know these things, and but it was so, when he, he had some great sayings, like, be your own champion, uh-huh. you know? Mm-hmm. And I love that. I love that. And 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 too too slow. I learned this lesson that well later he said just don't all overwhelm people with information. Just try just a little bit at a time if yes. they're ready. Yes. And don't push anything on people that are not ready. I mean, you know, I had a very a lot of good experience with that. And you know, I took that to heart. And I love his book, uh, the, the three part series. Uh, and I read that a couple of times, three times, I think, <laughs> at least. Well, uh, I, yeah, uh, I, I, I did, find with the books. The last, he, he, he was one of a kind. He was one of a kind. There was nothing like him. No. There was nothing, no, 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 no way. No. no. So, uh, in, but, but, but how he was very, was he very comfortable? Living like that, or what would you say? Uh, you, you mean re- remote and that kind of thing, or? Yeah, yeah, or just like accepting what the world is, you know. Well, he, he, him, yeah. I, you know, I mean that that's an interesting question because he didn't like things the way they were Mm -hmm. you know he 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 really he didn't like tyranny he didn't like corruption that's why he spoke Mm -hmm. i think he was compelled in a way to do so because of how abhorrent things were to him Mm -hmm. he was completely committed to Mm -hmm. to doing this and in such Mm -hmm. a way you know there was no he was, yeah, it was a quest. He, he was, yeah, it was a mission, really. He was completely yeah, was comfortable with the choices, with everything that he chose to give up, with the privations, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. He was completely comfortable with that, and he was dedicated to researching and studying and putting mm-hmm. this out in a way that it, should, it would just be hard for people to comprehend how dedicated he was to it. And yet... He could laugh, you know, at the end of his so-called day because he worked like a dog physically yeah, if, you know, yeah. if wood needed to be cut or whatever needed to go on that way yeah. or repairing a car, he could really work at that and then doing all of the research that he did. But when it was time to settle down and, um, you know, have a conversation or watch a movie or a documentary, he could make lots and lots of jokes and oh, you know yeah. be, be completely relaxed yeah. and he could laugh at the insanity yeah that's good that's good uh, yeah, and, that's and laugh a lot at the insanity so as you know he hated it and one thing that he told me and this I, I mean he may have said it a time or two but it always stayed with me and it does come up in my thinking from time to time. He said, no matter where you are and what you're doing, you could be at a party, you could be having dinner with friends, you could be um, watching a movie and and laughing, you could be out on a hike. This Mm -hmm. knowledge is always with you. It's really never out of your mind you can't just go and forget about it. You don't just have a holiday from it. No, that's true. It and changes that, you yeah, forever. It yeah. does. Yes. And it is true. It's, it, and it isn't just a matter of 
you know, comparing what you know to what you're seeing. Like you watch something like chemtrails or 9-11 and then you say, okay, I know what's going on here. I know what the agenda is and I know where they're taking us. It's not just the intellectual curiosity of putting it together. It's this kind of sadness that you learn to live with. It's a, a yeah. it's it's tragic. Mm -hmm. It is loss. It's loss of human potential. It's 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 loss, yeah. and you you learn to live with it. And I remember one time I kind of got teary eyed. We had to go to the mall for something. And he mm. was with Jason, who was helping with the website. And they went off. They went into some store, like a getting a computer part or something. I don't know. And I was just sitting out on the bench in the middle of the mall, watching people go by. And I kind of got teary eyed just thinking about that 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 they were just completely clueless of anything having to yeah. do with reality. And when yeah. they came back out of the store, Alan kind of noticed my mood and he said, what's up? And I said, well, you know, I was just thinking about people and, you know, they don't know what's going on. They're not living in reality. They're just kind of wandering about. And it made me sad. And yeah. he said, don't cry for the casualties. Don't cry for the what? Casualties. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I, I get, I, uh, I get where it's coming from. Yeah. Anyway, but, and, and, and I mean, yeah. I, I think that he, you know, I mean, he obviously recognized that you will feel bad from time to time for the casualties. But okay. at another point in mm. another conversation, he yeah. said, he said, we're in a war that has been going on for yeah. millennia, literally millennia. Yeah. And he said, it's, if yeah, you, yeah think that you're going to go out and save this one person like let's say for instance it's a family member or a good friend or a spouse in the case of you felt so yeah. betrayed by you you felt betrayed by your ex-girlfriend uh, and the mm. mother of your mm. child he said you cannot mm. help them they are no. wounded, they are dying on the battlefield, and most often it's because of choices that they have made. And you have yeah. to keep going. You've you got to keep going. Mm. Yeah. And he also said another very good thing that I took to heart is that if you study this, don't the information, well, I think that was regarding him, especially because he had so much knowledge, but, but also I felt that I had, I was compelled. That's why I was motivated to make this documentary and the other one and, and blogging and trying to inform people and handing out flyers and CDs and before, you know, uh, the internet took really off and, 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 and he said something about if you had let this information just stay inside you, and you do nothing with it, it's going to eat you up. Yes. And yeah, so it's, 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 I can't let go, you know. So every, every day I listen to hours and hours of lectures and psychiatrists and this and, you know, French things. And, but, but, you know, it, it's become a, just a new life and I just want to know. And, and like, like uh, he said sometimes, to know about something, even if it's evil and bad, because then it, you can take better decisions in your life. Mm -hmm. And sure, mm -hmm. you know, and I would never, you know, if I hadn't stopped on Alan what I probably would be jabbed up now and, and annoy me. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I am always yeah. daily, eternally grateful that I heard him. And because the very first thing that I did was start to make changes in my own life. And that is... It's like the scene, it, you almost think, well, that's a contradiction. Alan says, don't cry for the casualties. And yet he just literally gave his life over to do this. I'm sure he would have been mm. much happier playing guitar, you know, whatever. But you can't do that. You're compelled to do something. But it's the, mm -hmm. it, it's... You, by by when you if you indulge because it is kind of an, a self indulgent thing if you indulge in uh -huh. crying for the victims 
or waving your, you know, shaking your fist at who you think the perpetrators are, you've actually neutralized yourself on the battlefield. What you have to have is clear enough vision to mm-hmm. know, you know, in your case, you have these skills of photojournalism and years of yep. traveling around the world. And so you can actually use your skills to do something, mm. but you can't do something yep. if you are neutralized because you're just going, Oh, I feel really bad, but what can I do? It's just me as, you know, yeah. oh, I, I don't have much of a voice. Yeah. I don't know anything, you know, I mean, trust me, it would be very easy for mm. me to say, well, I really don't know enough to talk. Mm, I know mm. something. It's exactly what Alan said. It will eat me up inside if I don't do mm. something with what I know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I've been trying just to do, you know. And, and even if I, I know that I reached out and I helped a, a few people that became my friends, and they're mm-hmm. still my friends through mm-hmm. this truth seeking. So, so it, it has helped in one. I still talk to every, you know, every week in Norway. And, you know, if it was not for your blog, we, I wouldn't know these things, you know. Mm-hmm. And he has this enormous library and, uh, and we bought all, the, we even bought the Club of Rome. And we had to, a big, I mean, but at that time, we had to pay like for $350 oh, for that yeah, yeah. first revolution. And because I used that in the documentary, I wanted the original and I made a photograph of the pages and everything, you know. So, you know, but, but then the book had become kind of a thing in the truth community and then the price went up, right? Yeah, yeah. Just like, that's how it works, you know. So keep it out of the, the children's hands, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, so it was funny, like, in, and then, you know, even if I showed this to people that were very intelligent, here's the smoking gun, here's the this the screwed up science, and here's you know pictures more snow in the seventies than there is now, mm-hmm. or or other way around, you know, and then people still wouldn't get it, you know, they 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 just like oh, but but I think that the, you know the climate thing for very many people, uh, I think very many people see through that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so. Even though they're not talking loudly about it, and especially now with windmills in Norway, when they had hydropower forever, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, it's going to be interesting, Elmer, because I and do Now think, it's all going to the European Union. Yeah, Alan mm-hmm. talked about um, the, what kinds of fear would have to be whipped up around this. And I think that we are mm. going to see now. Yeah, I, I, I'm waiting for that one. Mm-hmm. Oof. Yep. Uh, I'm not waiting for it, but I'm not looking forward to it. But no. I, I can see they're going to do something like that, you know. And they're going to blame it. War, supply, chains, disruption, yes. this, that. That's why bread is so... Ex- and, and he was talking about... Food stamps and you know rationing and that's coming and and you know and then I think there is going to be a lot of food but with low low nutrition mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know yeah and just slowly just people getting sicker and and this is also the thing I have problem with the truth community is that n- almost nobody has solutions and I say first of all get to know your neighbor get out of the cities. Mm-hmm. Um, tr- if you can, and then try to cooperate and learn skills, do things, you know, be a, have some extra water. I have, I have a box here for, you know, six months of storable foods that's, you know, organic, bought from America, and, mm-hmm. you know, just in case, mm-hmm. you know, not, not that I'm hysteric or anything, but I just have it there and I have been f- filtrating my water for 20 years. This well, is the kind know, of thing, you know, people like would, and, yeah, people would write Alan and they'd say, well, what, what, what can we do? What can we do? And that would be one of the first things that he would say, 
often enough yeah. is if you can get out of the city, try to get out of the city. And then it's just kind of a common yeah. sense thing. If you, you should have a flashlight and the flashlight should have batteries that yeah. are, you know, not expired yeah. and you should have plenty of water and mm. some food. And it's, it's mm. really just like you have a first aid kit. You just need to have a little bit of a survival kit without going full bore prepper. Yeah. And do what you yeah, can, yeah, yeah. and and then if when you have extra, you you know that you can help a neighbor, you can help a friend, and mm. in need. Yeah, yeah, and 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 building communities for is very important, I think, for mm-hmm. the future wherever you are. And I've seen some good examples. There's an, an American comedian that. that Comedian that's called Owen Benjamin that was kicked out of Hollywood when he started uh, in 2016 criticizing the trans, uh, he, the LBQT movement, mm-hmm. you know. And he, well, he was very popular and now he has like a following of 10,000 of people and okay, you can say that while well, it's diluted, but they're buying up farms and they're coming together and he moved out to LA and now he has a farm and he has alpacas and goats and cows and in Idaho and has four boys and, you know, just completely left, you know, the limelight, you know, because he was canceled in every direction there was, you know. Mm-hmm. And then that's interesting to see that, oh, that was, look, and he's just trying to, you know, be go uh, be a good example. And he, he was like, I didn't know how to use the drill, you know, electric drill. Now <laughs> I know after a year too and he was like but you know it's hard for him you know and and but but he can do it and then others can do it and i think be done okay he was a semi-celebrity so but there must be others all, all over the place doing you know that in in small pockets you know and i think that's the future and i think yeah. that you know they don't have the manpower to go after everyone and no. not not well, I don't know what they have on the ground and robots and stuff. I think but, what you're talking still, about, you know. I think what you're talking about, Elmer, yeah. is the the barbarians of Brave New World, yeah, yeah, the yeah. savages yeah, yeah, of yeah, Brave right. New yeah. World. Yeah, mm. because there are. Yeah, I will be certain. Yeah, we are, there. Are, there will be pockets of people everywhere who are going to survive mm. and come through, no matter how bad it gets. And, but we yeah. will be the savages because we haven't complied, we haven't gone along, and we don't get all the perks. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't get fast yeah. Wi-Fi, we don't get any Wi-Fi, we don't get you know. But it's okay. Mm, fine. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, but I can I can just do something else. I can get a fishing boat. You exactly. Know? <laughs> 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 you know, I can join the uh, just a Thai fisher boat and just ask if I can be along for the right, you know, there are many possibilities in the future. Mm So, 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 you know, and, and, you know, that's, it's too, even though it's depressing things that are happening, I think, you know, it's very easy to fall in the doom and gloom situation all the time. And even though they have very perfected the, the system, the powers that be, I think they will be successful to a degree in the short term, but in the long run, they will fail. Yeah. Because it's all based on a very complex system that will be 100% uh, dependent on electricity, that all channels and all cables, everything that will be have to be working, mm-hmm. you know, for mm-hmm. the control aspect. And yes. Just yes. a small glitch or monkey wrench in something will disrupt it. And then, you know, so, so uh, the more complex you build a system, it, the more it, more it falls apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The easier it is to, to put a spanner in um, it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, and, 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 and some people say that they all reach with COVID. Maybe, mm. maybe not. I don't know. I don't uh, think they, so. Many, no, no, I don't think so either. Uh, because they just, uh, and but 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 then again, what I'm, I hope that 
this uh, digital money doesn't become a reality just tomorrow, <laughs> uh, but uh, that they will have some pushback there. I hope uh, because that is, uh, you know, if that is a, if that is set in stone and people, mm, and the majority accepts that, we we are losing more freedoms than ever yes. in recorded human yes. history. We will well. be shackled and all fronts, you know. Well, I mean, so, you know, in and, and the redux yeah. that I put up today, Alan was talking mm. about that. He he said slavery, and it is yeah. going to be the most intense kind of slavery because you'll be cut off from everything. But again, savages who can barter and know mm-hmm. and, you know, have taught themselves a skill or two and, you know, it 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 yeah. needn't be doom and gloom, but but we are going to have to have mental resilience. Oh yeah, yeah, and and this is a spiritual battle also because I become a lot more. I don't follow any religion because I know they're tampered with almost everything, and there's truth to every really religion. But I become a lot more. I'm absolutely a believer in the Creator. Yes. And I wasn't that. Uh, 20 years ago, I was more like an atheist agnostic, you know, but now I feel that there's so much more. Uh, well, I, so I do that, think, that's, El- uh, it, I think, Elmer, it's, uh, very, it's really hard to study this agenda going back into antiquity and mm-hmm. continue to hold fast to the idea that this is just human humans botching things mm. or bad humans do, you know getting together and mm. planning thing you know it, it, mm. it, you just do reach mm. a point where you think uh, there there's something else at play yeah and I, I think that you know uh, I kind of call this human existence on earth as a kind of a, a karate dojo place where you are tested <laughs> In a way, I like you know, that. You're, you're, yeah, it's the only place you can be three-dimensional with your soul and uh-huh. feel pain, yeah. but you learn from pain, you know, or, yeah. or mistakes, you know, and mm-hmm. that's, it's kind of, I look at it as a realm of this, and there yeah. are many other realms maybe, or, you know, above us. It's meant to be, and it's a, it's intelligent design, and when I go into nature, I see it, it, everything's perfect nothing wrong in nature it's self-regulating and it's like wow i'm you know i can watch a butterfly or ants or whatever you know it's like they all work together like a zipper you know and it's like you know and then i just sometimes feel sorry for the the, the rulers because you know so you're trying to fix something that's not broken yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of false. It's the it, the arrogance, like Alan Watts said, it's like unmeasurable from yes. their part. Yeah, that they want to, you know, have they must mold, they must do this, oh, yeah. m- must have control, oh. and they can't sleep when they don't have control. You know, yeah, I know. It's and I, and I I feel so sorry for them in a way. <laughs> Total control. And, 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 and yeah. And I work so much with celebrities, you know, and I try to tell people, you know, there are seven deadly sins, but there should be eight, two more. So one is coveredness and nine is idol worship. That uh-huh. should never happen. Yeah, yeah. And I say yeah. I work with big like ACDC and big bands and, you know, celebrities, not so many, but a few. And they're miserable, most of them. Yeah, yeah. They're miserable people, more miserable than the poorest guy in the streets, you know? Yeah. Well, because, because they are so just many of them have by no idea. People. Yeah. Yeah, so many of them have no idea who they are. That's true. Somebody Actors else is telling especially. them who they are. And I say, you know, you look up to actors, you know, they don't even know who they are. Yeah. Most of them are psychopaths. Yes. You know, yeah. that's been proven. That's, yeah. I got that from Alan and they, it, they it's did true. tests on yeah. English acts yeah, before the seventies and such. And they course they not all but the great majority are. Yeah. And of course I experienced this in even in the military and with officers they were completely sadistic and you know 
you know. And that were, we were just regular army, and, you know, I've seen this in politics, and it's the same pattern, you know, people that tend to go to these, and people that need so much attention. Mm-hmm. I don't understand that, you know, I can't, you know, I think I find that fascinating, pathologically fascinating, <laughs> that they need to have, oh, me, me, oh, look at me, I'm in, I'm this, I'm playing this superhero now, no, you just <laughs> Actor with stand-in and stuntman, and I, I, I work in the media industry. I'm, I'm just laughing at you, you know, <laughs> you know. So, so well, the real heroes you never hear about, you know. Like no, Alan I know Watt is that, one of that's the true. Heroes. That's true. Pe- yeah. People have said that they, you know, were surprised and saddened that more people didn't know about Alan Watt. But it's like you found for yourself that a lot of people, he, you know, there's not the entertainment value there or it's too serious or it oh. seems like doom and gloom. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in a real yeah. world, uh, that you know, everybody would know him because he would be talking such amazing information and common yeah. sense. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, and, and and unfortunately, you know, uh, you know the, the 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 technology part, that the onslaught of the internet and uh, the, the the I call it a dumb phone, not the smartphone, mm-hmm. but whatever. That is okay. TV was the worst things, and then came the cell phone, mm-hmm. and I see, I, I'm. I, I, people are not comfortable in their own skin, you know. They, no. they they put it, you know. We know we know all too well about people watching too much down on the screen, and you know what are you doing? You know, uh, you know we're sitting here in the jungle. You know, I could sit up in the jungle here, you know, with an old time man, I know, a couple of years older than me, almost sixty, and we sit and talk, and he never, you know, his phone is inside another house, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and. And and I have some foreigners around me, and they're just like, oh, with the phone, and oh, there's bad connection up here, and, and thank God for that, I say. So <laughs> we can, you know, what put away the phone so we can speak together, you know? Yeah. And there's a beautiful waterfall besides there, and it's you know, all these jungle sounds, and come on, you know, you know, and the, 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 this device is the most dangerous thing that ever pushed on humanity, I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. Combined with the social anti anti social media and all this narcissism that comes with it and, and that that is so sad to see how the youth are, you know, completely self centered and, you know, are getting depressed because they're not pretty enough or whatever. It's like we never had this problem no, when I was young. No, it's just so, it, uh, it, yeah. It's pretty uh, sad. so sad to see. So, yeah. but, uh, but, but, you know, it would be great, you know, if I could take away something, it would be the, you know, the mainstream media, the television, the, and the cell phone. Yeah. So <laughs> if I had, or I would take that away from all mankind. <laughs> yes, so. absolutely. Well, they wouldn't, you know, Alan has said repeatedly, they wouldn't be able to achieve anything without the computer and now the cell phone. I mean, you know. It is the tool that is necessary for the total control yeah. and, and standardization. Yeah, it is. The thing is that, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I have, you know, I, I can do, I can weld, I can do simple carpentry, I can do a lot of things, you know. Mm-hmm. I can fix technical problems, I can, you know, you know, I'm not an expert in everything, but, you know, I can do a lot of other things than just take pictures. Uh, and, but, but I see with the young people, they're very skillless. Yes. You know? And not interested. And not interested. Know, not interested at all. And it's like, don't you know, don't you want to know how to, you know, change batteries in the flashlight? No. So that, 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 <laughs> I heard this story from another podcast that had some grandchildren over and, and he, they were going down into the basement and they said, hey, here's a flashlight. It's not working. Oh, well, here's new batteries. And they couldn't figure out how to put the batteries inside because they didn't have a charging plug. And then I said, huh, there you have the capsule of the mindset, you know. So yeah. if you can't change the batteries in a flashlight, yeah. what can you do? <laughs> so, but, you know, then. But, but then again, you meet a few young people that are very capable again. So I have hope. 
Yes. I have hope. I have it. Yeah. We have, but, we but, have uh, to. Yeah. We have to yeah, have Yeah, we hope. have to. Or we would just be a couple of old people complaining about the young generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and no hope, then there's no point in nothing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and, um, like I say, they can have controls in the big cities, but I think like, I think it's gonna pan out very much like Brave New World, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, in a way. Mm-hmm. I think so, uh, and uh, and and you you see it also. I, you know, I talk to so many foreigners coming, but but the sad thing is, of course, that they're leaving their own country, and their country is like slowly dismantling. But so many want out of the West now, out of the Western mm-hmm. countries. So many people that well have the resources, they want to leave. Many, many. So uh, we have Norwegian friends that you know are want to retire down here in Thailand, for example. You know, so so we are retired now. So we are on retirement visa, and, but 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 it's a you know we can stay home and fight against the system in Norway, I guess, or any other country. But you know, I understand people just they want away from. The high food prices, the left food prices, mm-hmm. and they want they want the freedom and, and you know the freedom to say what they want, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and this uh, that that's you know the, the the censorship is like what it's like that's out of it's off the scale you know mm-hmm. and how they you can't say that or you can't you know even people are offended by a T-shirt I had a T-shirt with something. But you know, I'm allergic to stupid people or something like that. Just like, <laughs> just like mean. And somebody was offended by that. Oh you know? no! They actually said, "My down here, yeah." And another Norwegian. Oh, I'm sorry. You can only offend yourself. That's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to if you have the wrong football T-shirt or I don't, I'm, I don't care for sports at all. I never have. So, but. But, but, you know, people are, they get, uh, you know, they're so fragile, become so fragile. So. Yeah, know, what, so. What, what do they call those nowadays? They call them snowflakes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. They have to get yeah, their safe one, space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why, oh my God. Oh, yes, this and that. And how can you say that? And, well, if I go into the, into the, into the woods and, Yell a forbidden word. What what happens? Do you think yeah. nothing? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, no trees will fall down. No global warming will happen. Uh, you know. So no, you know, no tree was uh, harmed by uh, the wearing of this T-shirt. No, <laughs> no or or my saying some word or yeah. or this or that. And, uh, uh, there was, uh, yeah, so that's, um, you know, but that's, you know, the, the, the vocabulary going down, people's uh, ability to communicate is shrinking then, and they're getting more antisocial, and I can see how they're nudging people into this virtual reality thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the movie that uh, um, uh, Ready Player One. What is it? Ready Player One. No. It's Ready Player One. That's a, I think it's the, Steven Spielberg made that a few years back. Huh. And it's about the future world where everybody's playing this big game, you know, and in the virtual world, and they're living in squalor, you know, but they're rather they live in the virtual world, you know. And it's kind of, I think that's some kind of predictive programming in that movie, and I think that's maybe how the cities maybe will look like. And well, I, I, if you have time, you should just watch it just for fun, for homework. Oh, I definitely, uh, I will. And I, I think you also mentioned the film called Surrogates on yes. another broadcast. Is that yes. right? Yeah, I've seen that. We, we, me and my wife, we, we, we saw that recently, and it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. People, and, and you see it, they rather have a fake image of themselves than be in reality. You know? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I say, okay, if if 
I'm getting older, I'm losing my hair, I get wrinkles, I'm getting older, I'm turning into 56 years old, and I'm just going to get older. And I, I don't care. Oh, yeah. I don't care if I'm uh, older, that's just part of life, you know? Well, you know what I think when I, I, when I see yeah. an actress with the colored hair uh, and the Botox and all of uh, that, I just oh, see a yeah. middle-aged actress with colored hair and Botox. I don't see a young woman. No, they're, I don't. They're only I, fooling I just, themselves. Yeah, they're, it's self-harming and it's just going nowhere fast in a cul-de-sac to nowhere. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, and then at the, uh, sometime they're going to regret not having babies or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they're going to get more depressed and take more pills. And yeah, and, and, and that I can say from all my travels that the most happy people I ever met was the poorest people in the world. If that is the slums yeah. outside Nairobi or in the slums outside the Lima in Peru, they were all in the same boat. And they, you know, they come running with their last cup of coffee just to give it to us because we come with the camera and everything, you know. And then, you know, that courtesy and and being nice, you know, and then knowing, you know, so so... The you know the poor people of the world are really you know the salt of the earth in a way, and always will be. And they, they at least they know they are in the same boat, you know. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So so we have a lot to learn from that, I think. Yeah. Something that that Alan would comment on is that the people who somehow think like if you want to call them the middle class or the lower middle class or whatever. They aren't interested in anything except being in that next class up. So they're not really trying to help each other. They're not trying to help people who have less than. They just have the Mm -hmm. idea that if they work hard enough, they're going to have that too. And, you know, it's an illusion. But what you have is people who are chasing, you know, they're chasing the carrot. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, the dead end is just like see, it's not. There is no prize. No. At the end, finish line there. Right. No. That's the thing. But they find out that later in life. <laughs> so, so, so for me now, I'm I'm just very focused on the spiritual things, and I'm trying to, yeah, you know, like know thyself, like Alan said, mm-hmm. and that's very important. That's the first rule of engagement, know thyself as much as you can and and just, you know, be grateful for the small things and and if you can see that, oh, there's another youngster that gets it, that's good, you know, mm-hmm. and then just try to focus on that and like you said, the others are casualties like Alan said, you just, well, that's and I think it's been this way for thousands, like you said, thousands of years. Yes. And I uh, think yeah. uh, yeah. I've had Civilizations in the past, this is just my speculation, that's been very advanced and, and they become kind of like spoiled and they lose uh, their vision and they go down. Yes. And, and they rise up again and it goes in cycles like this, you know. No. But, but we're still here, so, so somebody survives every age, 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 I guess. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so there's always hope. So, but, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like I said to some Norwegian friends, they were complaining about the, the food prices. Well, maybe you shouldn't support the Ukraine war then, because Ukraine <laughs> is the biggest uh, wheat supporter in, uh, grower in, in Europe. So, so maybe take that flag over your profile picture, number one. <laughs> and then they, what do you mean? Well, the food comes, well, Norway is 95% dependent on imports of food. So come on, don't, don't, uh, rah rah for more war, especially in countries that make food that you're dependent on. So, you know, it's kind of, but you know, people don't know all these things and this, uh, yeah. That's the way it goes. So, and uh, before you know, I mean, I, I said to my friends also that why don't you get a hunt while you can get a hunting license at least, you know, mm-hmm. your rifle and uh, and lock it in, and so you can go and get a moose every season when it's allowed in Norway. It's very strict, but anyway, you can do that, you know, and then you know and. 
get some other friends to do the same. And, you know, and why not? And, and they don't do it because they're just like, even though they're truth seekers and they're just, their nose is down in a book or something. Yes, fine. But why not? It's 15 years ago I said to you, learn how to hunt, you know, or whatever, you fish something, you know. You know? Mm-hmm. So, but. Yeah, but it's it's very hard to get people to... Uh, I like that, yeah, you know, yeah. Neil uh, Neil Foster that I talk to regularly, he has... <laughs> I have mm-hmm. really watched him in real time learn so many skills, and I'm sure a lot of things that he has done in the past, but I don't think curing bacon is something he's done for years and years. I think he just taught himself that. And he's also gotten into raising his own hens who lay eggs and he gardens he, and he fishes and there's, a, you know, so by his example, mm. he is showing himself and his family and his neighbors and the people that he talks to when he talks to me or whenever he's out and about, there is always something that you can do. Always. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's that. That is something that you um, have um, to. My wife is uh, very good with. She has very green hands, but uh, but we grow our own Italian uh, basil inside. You know, with grow ah. lights, and she makes her own pesto. And but it's just small scale, and but you know, but we we make all our food from the bottom up mostly. Um, but we don't grow it so much, but we, we, but, but we are in the tropics, so we can get pretty good fresh things. But still in Thailand, it's a lot of spraying of the agriculture. And, uh, yeah. But we want to have, we have a small garden and we want to make, you know, grow things there, you know, in, in the very near future. So, so we'll see how that pans out. But, and, and here in Thailand, nobody cares if you build like another story on your house. <laughs> uh, nobody, there's no department coming saying you cannot have that window there. Yeah. You yeah. Know, in Norway, you have to you have to wait for five years to get your house. You know, uh, you know, certified for uh, this environmental class A, and it's going to cost a hundred thousand dollars, and then you have to uh, take a loan. Uh, and I'm like, what? <laughs> no, that's no. Terrible. So, I wouldn't mind doing this again with you in a, you know, a couple months or so because I wouldn't, I, I think it would yeah. be interesting to kind of get into some of your photojournalism stories. I think that would be a, an interesting yeah. topic. Yeah, I have a, actually, I have an uh, Operation Mockingbird story for you. <laughs> oh, good, good. I mm-hmm. thank you all for listening. I've really enjoyed this because I had not spoken to Elmer before. He had been communicating with Alan for years, and it was fun to just mm-hmm. dive right into a conversation with you. I want to let you know that next week I will be talking with Prince. I have mentioned him before, a long-time listener to Alan's talks and somebody that I enjoy quite a bit. And I, more importantly, I've gotten a lot from him and learned a lot from him. So I'm looking forward to that conversation. Thank you. Take care.